You want to make a model fire? Join me now to see how it was done. Right, this is the fire as I've got it at the moment. Now, I like the smoke and I like this sort of billowing a bit here, but I want some actual flames. So what I'm going to try is using a glue gun and see if we can create some and then refit this back over the top because I still want this smoke effect. All right, let's have a go. Right, so I've got a piece of uh, acetate, which I use to take the body off locos. I've got my trusted glue gun which this particular version does have a high and low setting on here of which I've put it to low because we don't want it to take too long to set. It takes ages if you put it on the high setting and it's very, very hot. I've also got my smoke, which I should just put out of the way. We'll need that in a bit. Now, the diameter of the LED is three mil. So all I want to do, first of all, is create a circle of this stuff about leaving a three mil hole. Okay, and pull away. Now the idea is that you take something, I'm holding this upside down, and then pull down to create flames. And just pull off at different angles. The more we do, the better the effect will be. Right, so going in with the second lot now, I'm, I'm gonna do this in a little bit at a time. So, Pulling the glue up as I go and then pulling upside down. See, pull down. If you do this just as it's starting to set, the flames will hold their shape. There we go. I think that's as much as I'm going to get on this round. But it's getting there, isn't it? I'm quite happy with the way that's coming. Right, next bit. I want to sign, sign see if I can get some really tall ones. Pull that away. Giving it a moment. Oops, wrong end. see I'm just pulling away quite sharply I'm hoping to grab some of these a really long one and be able to pull it away so that's going now I'm just going to hold it in place let that go off a bit going you can see it changing color I'm going to work on putting a few more of those on and I'll come back to you in a short time. I'm aiming for flames probably, well not an inch high, probably about a few more of that sort of height, but I want them thicker at the bottom. So I need to build this up a bit more and then there'll be more triangular type shapes when they come out. All right, I'll speak to you in a minute. Right, there you go. Now you might be thinking, hang on John, what have you done there? You've got this like lump coming off the side. Well, the reason for that is because I want to create a bit of a scene here. We've got the couple arguing on the bridge or whatever they're doing. You interpret it how you want to. I'm telling you the official version. They're arguing and um, uh, they're, they're camping in the area. Now, where that fire is, I'm going to put a tent. Now, one of them whichever you decide has become a little bit negligent and the tent has caught fire and this bit is the corner of the tent okay so I'm just going to create a bit of a scene there hopefully it'll be a little bit of amusement the idea is sort of loosely based on Top Gear if you remember when Clarkson May and Hammond went on holiday with a caravan as the program went on the they um, set fire to the next door's tent and um, went home with a caravan, which was just a chassis. So it's sort of loosely based on that, really. So hopefully it's not it's not intended to offend anybody. It's just a little bit of humour based on that situation on that programme. Right. So it's time to paint this. So what have I got? I've got some obviously some yellow, orange, red, 
black, yes, believe it or not, because that creates ash, and a little bit dark brown for a contrast. Okay, so opening all these up, actually give it a bit of a shake so I get a bit in the lid. Now I'm going to take a very fine brush, triple zero, and the first colour I'm going to put on is yellow. Now I'm going to streak this up from the edges. And I'm literally just going to paint quite a lot of this yellow. Because at the end of the day, yellow and orange are the basis, the basic colours for fire. I'm going to go in with the orange. Now, don't want a lot. Literally just streak it on. Not much. Less is most definitely more. So just the odd little bit here and there, okay? Same with the red. Now I'm gonna try and pick out a few of the uh, tips with that because they'll be seen more. Like that, again, less is more. A little bit down there. Okay, wash that out. Now I am gonna switch back to this smaller brush because I really don't want a lot of this, the brown. Just odd hints here and there. On the tips as well, but I want the yellow to remain the predominant color. It's a bit too much there on that one. Wash the brush out and just wipe it off. In fact, I use the bigger brush to sort of get rid of that. All right, easily done. If you make a mistake, just a tad more like that. Now the black, very sparingly. Not much. In fact, I'm just going to produce a little bit of the wisps on the very ends. In fact, I will use the bigger brush because it will be easier to grab the ends. But sort of a little bit. Because these are the bits. When, when the flames go up into the sky, if you like, the embers are dying and they're turning black as they're released into the sky. Okay, but I will put a little bit down the bottom, just a tiny little bit, not a lot. A little bit in there. All right, not too much because I want the light from the LED to obviously shine up through the middle. If you put too much on, then it will block all that out. Right, so what I need to do first of all, I'm going to take the same piece that I've got before and I want to stretch it out this time because I want the smoke to rise in different parts. I can always go and get a bit more wadding if I need to. In fact, I might, but uh, for the time being, I'm just gonna spread it out and position it inside there. So hopefully you can get the idea of what's going on there. Now there's too much down the bottom, so I'm gonna pull a bit of that off and just try and mount it on the surface. I don't want the smoke to be wider than the natural fire itself. I think that will be all right. So I'm gonna put some glue on the tips. I'm not gonna put a lot of glue on because again, for the same reason, if you put a lot of glue down in there, then the LED won't be able to get the light shining out. So I'm literally just putting glue on the tips of the fire and then the smoke will stick to that. So I'm trying to get the orange bit because I always painted this orange, obviously, and then poke it down into the fire. 
like so. Okay, now I'm just going to pull that bit off because it's not working at the moment. So I will get some more white in a minute. And it just needs to be pushed down onto the glue. And check the other side, it's not quite right. Now you will get splatters going out and that's absolutely fine. And just turn it so that the white bit is on the top. Okay, right, I'll get some more white wadding and then we'll right. create Next stage then, um, I'm just going to use hairspray for this. Um, this is the stuff that my mother sort of didn't use. So I'm going to give that a bit of a spray, leave it for a few seconds. Okay. I'm amazed how sticky this stuff gets, to be honest. I didn't realise at first. Anyway, take my, my piece of wadding and pull it and tease it out. Don't want a lot. Now, you'll find sometimes you get these like uh, cottony fibery bits. Now, clearly, we don't want any of those. So remove all of it. There's another bit in there. I don't want that. Now, the idea is to literally pull it on like that and then cause the whole thing to sort of rise up. Now I'm going to give that another spray. Because in the same way that it holds hair up, it will hold this up as well. Oh, there's another strangly bit in there. Get rid of that. And I'm literally just going to tease it up to create this smoke. Get rid of that. See, it's all gone sticky. I'm going to clean my hands and then add a bit more on the top and give it another spray from a distance. Get the and then get that to sit. On the top like that okay now hopefully give the some give the spray a little time to go off that should be all right now I am going to remove this from the base obviously uh, but it does trying to get that little bit of plastic inside there that bit of fiber optic like I said um, it was proving to be a bit difficult um, but I might be able to cut it off. If I can't, all I'm going to do is literally just cut around the edge with a pair of scissors. But I think I'll leave that for five to ten minutes to sort of harden up a little bit. And then I'll stick it on the layout. LEDs that I should be using are these from the Hand Signalman. Um, I've bought quite a lot of, of these, um, well, LEDs from him. And he usually sends out some free ones. Um, along with the ones you buy and these just happen to be the right color. I've got he sent me blue, yellow, orange, green, whatever color he's, he's sent that to me over the different um, orders. Anyway, what you need to do before you can actually connect this to your 12 volt, if I put that down there, you'll notice then that one leg is slightly longer than the other. And that the longer leg on this side is the positive and the obviously the other side is the negative. So what you need to do is to put a resistor on the positive leg. Now, I know this one's green. I do know that. <laughs> but it goes to show exactly the way you wire it up. So I've, I've soldered a resistor. This happens to be, I think it's a 1K resistor that goes with them. You get a load of resistors with these, a um, whole load. So I've connected up the red wire to the positive and the black wire to the negative. And then the idea then would be to cover the positive leg with some heat shrink. And the idea would then be that you cover up, you take that all the way to the end. So that there's no way that these two wires could touch each other, as you could see, which could easily happen across there. So that would insulate the exposed parts of the wire then then it's safe to put through the baseboard and to create the fire effect right so you've got your leds then and 
you probably noticed, actually, I've got more than one LED in there. There's actually four there, believe it or not. I've got my orange flickering one there from FEMA Sigma Electronics. And the other three are from the hand signalman. Now, there's another orange one in there. And there's a white one there. And then another orange one inside the tent. Now, the other three, they do appear to flicker slightly, but they're not intended to. All three have uh, a resistor on in the same way as I showed you, all on the positive leg. OK, now I then went ahead and then connected that to a 12 volt bus. Now, as you can see from here, these two wires, this red and black wire, are connected to a 12 volt transformer. I'll take you over and show you that. Hopefully you can see this here is a 12 volt uh, DC transformer. OK, so that just plugs in. And then the wires come up through here and then just link through. I haven't connected it up properly yet, but that then goes through into a switch. And all that is, is you, you've got your red and your black wire. I've got the black wire going straight through uh, or into a terminal block. That goes into a terminal block and then another black wire comes out the other side. The red wire goes into the switch in one connection and then out of the other. So when you switch it on, it comes on and goes off when you switch it off. All right. So this acts as a bit like an isolator switch. So the two wires, the red and the black wire, come out from where I've just showed you. And then the three, no, the four LEDs that I've got, you've got the four red and the four black there. They all go into corresponding terminal blocks connecting up to the red and the black. OK, I hope that makes sense. And then all I've done then, well, actually, I beg your pardon, the wires come in. And then just as I did with the isolator switch, the red goes through this switch here and the black goes into a terminal block and then straight out the other side in exactly the same way as I did before. I hope that makes sense. So you get the effect of the fire. OK, why not give it a go yourself? Anyway, the top video is going to be all about my layout here, which is Piccadilly Sidings and some of the things I've done on that. And the other layout, the other uh, video on the screen is going to be about my other N-gauge layout, Piccadilly, based on Manchester Piccadilly Station. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye for now.